What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.2 beta 3 to register developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, we also got iPadOS 18.2 beta 3, macOS Sequoia 15.2 beta 3, watchOS 11.2 beta 2, and tvOS 18.2 beta 2. But of course in this video we're talking all about iOS 18.2 beta 3. So starting off with the size, you can see it came in just over over one gigabyte on my iPhone 16 Pro Max. It came in at 1.04 gigs. Let's go and check out this new build number. Settings general about 18.2. That new build is 22C5131E. So an E at the end of the build number, which indicates we have at least one beta to go before the RC and then the final release, which we'll talk about all that near the end of this video. And if we go down to the modem firmware, you can see that is now 1.21.04 on the 16 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.2 beta three? And the first thing has to do with the notes application and the ability to create an image from text. So this is using the image wand feature. So if you select some text right here and you go to the context menu and you swipe over, you will notice that it now says add to playground. Before in beta two, it would say create image when you had some text selected and it now does the same thing. It's just called something different, add to playground. So that might be a little bit confusing for, you know, average users who don't really know what this feature does. I think create image is a lot more straightforward, but you can see that has changed. And it looks like the generative features once again have been improved here with beta three as well. So I did do some testing in image playground and also right here, the images just seem a little bit better. And by the way, you'll notice that when you tap on this plus right here, you do get the option to change the style of the image that it created. So if you want it to look like an illustration, you can do that. Or of course, if you want it to look like an animation, you can do that and it will change it very quickly. Now, speaking of a sketch here. So one of the big features that Apple announced is that you can sketch out an image and then have Apple intelligence or the image wand create that image for you. Now that is still missing here in this third beta. So let me show you. So for example, if you draw a tree, so let's just do like a tree like this. So now if you select the image wand feature, and you go ahead and circle that sketch that you did, you can see that nothing happens. It just says start with a few words or a phrase that best describes this image. So that is not working yet. Eventually we will be able to circle that sketch and it will create an image out of it. Apple showed this at the WWDC event when they were first showcasing this feature. And if you select some text right here, we go to our writing tools and then go down to compose to access ChatGPT. You'll notice that the ChatGPT button, the little icon there is now black instead of a rainbow color an Apple intelligence like color. And also the compose with ChatGPT text is now more opaque. It was a little bit less opaque before. Same with the logo right there. And when we tap into here, you'll notice that the animation is the same, but again, the text is a little bit more opaque. And also the plus icon is now yellow instead of that gradient. And speaking of photos, we also have a change in the photos application. So this is very apparent when you load up a screenshot. So we'll load up this screenshot, for example. So before the normal behavior that we saw previously, previously was it would just show the full screenshot and then you tapped on it to zoom in to that screenshot. That way nothing was covering up the image. Well, now here in 18.2 beta three, when you select that image, you'll notice that it just goes straight to full screen. It doesn't give you the full look of that image right away and you can't even zoom out of it. So if you tap, it just makes the UI go away. And that might seem like an improvement until you realize that the bottom little carousel here of photos just covers up the image. Like you have to tap it again to be able to see that full image. So for me, this is a regression, especially when you can see right here, this, this UI just looks bad. I mean, it just looks like a bug. The delete button right here is over top of the selection text there, the, the ability to select text. I can't even tap on that unless I want to remove it. So you can see, I, I think this might be a bug, but this is a regression. If this is the new way that we're going to see photos in the photo application. And this is actually even worse with videos because if you play a video, you can see that the UI of the photos around it are just completely over top of the video. 
So, and it doesn't go away. You can see it's covering up part of the video there. You have to tap on it to be able to see the full video. And you will notice that the animation is slightly different as well when you're in full screen. If you tap right here to go out of full screen, it's a more subtle change to show the top and bottom borders of the photos application. And of course it does look a little bit different as well. So if you take a look up top underneath of the date, first off that's now centered, the date is smaller, and also you can see that the time is centered underneath of it as well. And that X is also gone from the top right corner. Before you could tap on the X to go back to the album or back to your photo library. Now that is gone, we just have the three dots. And I believe that the reason that X was removed is because we now have a back arrow in the top left corner, which I think makes a lot more sense than having an X in the top right corner. So I like the UI changes for the top bar right here. I'm just not a fan of how, you know, the video now covers up, you know, or the photos now cover up a part of the video. So I'm sure Apple will do some more tweaking on that, especially when it comes to photos with text, because once again, this bottom bar here just completely covers that up. And while we're here, if we tap on the share icon in the bottom left hand corner, you'll notice some changes here as well. So first off, our dark mode icons now show up in the share sheet and also the air drop icon itself has a slight change here. So you have to look kind of close, but you'll notice that the dot in the middle is larger and there are also less lines than before. There used to be four lines. Now there are just three lines on that glyph icon. In the mail application, we now have a new pop-up that says manage badge count. So this is a new pop-up with beta three and it says only unread messages categorized as primary will appear on the mail icon. And that of course is going to be the badge number for the application to see how many notifications you have. So that feature was introduced in beta two, but this is a new pop-up right here. And if you tap on learn more, it will take you into that setting. It's actually in the notifications section in settings and then into mail and then down here to customize notifications. That's where you can change this setting to show only your primary unread messages or all unread messages as a notification badge. We also got a new firmware update for the AirPods Pro 2 and AirPods 4 today. So for the AirPods Pro 2, either the Lightning or USB-C version, those got updated to version 7B21. And both of the AirPods 4 models, the ANC and non-ANC versions, both got the same build, which is 7B20. And then also today, Apple published a press release about the new Find My feature, which will allow you to share the location of lost items with third party. So if you go into your AirTags, you will see that you now have a section to share the item's location, and you can go ahead and get a link for that item and send that to a third party so they can also track your lost luggage or your stolen items. And Apple actually shows some really cool screenshots of this in action, specifically with airlines. And they said that in the coming months, more than 15 airlines will have access to this feature. So they'll begin accepting find my item locations as part of their customer service process for locating mishandled or delayed bags. And then something else I noticed with beta three is that now when you select text, we finally have writing tools on the first page of our context menu. So you'll see writing tools right next to paste, whereas before it did not always show up on the first page for me. And this also applied to a bigger screen phone like my other 15 Pro Max. I did not get writing tools every time on the first page. I would have to swipe over and then writing tools was right there. So it didn't happen every time, but sometimes it would happen. But now it seems like with beta three, writing tools will always be on the first page of the context menu, which is great. However, I do still wish that Apple would let us customize the order of what shows up on our context menu. It seems like an easy feature to add. And if you're lucky enough to have a car with CarPlay 2.0, the media and climate app icons have been changed with beta three. And then taking a look at the release notes, we do have a few known issues here. So specifically with the ChatGPT integration, we see issues with the MDM profiles and also requests to generate images with ChatGPT and writing tools might fail. And we still have that issue with messages not appearing until you reboot your device. And then of course, Apple does mention the big issue I've had for a while before this was ever on a release notes page is the stickers bug where stickers just do not appear in the emoji keyboard. But I'll go ahead and do a one up on Apple because my stickers are not only not appearing, but now if we go down here, take a look at this. All of my stickers have been removed with beta three. So I had about eight or nine stickers that I've accumulated over the years, and I've added quite a few within the past couple of weeks, and now they're just simply all gone. 
So I'm hoping to see those return in a future beta. I hope they're not gone for good, but I've had major issues as you guys have seen throughout all the videos here on my channel for the past like couple of months, I've had major issues with stickers just simply not appearing in my emoji keyboard. And now it's gotten to its lowest point yet where all my stickers are just gone. And that's a shame because it was just starting to get better with beta two. So I was starting to see some of my stickers actually appear, not all of them, but some of them would appear. But now with beta three, they're just gone. But there's another issue I'm having with beta three. And that is that my lock screen is just broken. For some reason, it goes really dark right here. It it looks like it's almost in sleep mode even though i'm not in sleep mode i don't have that you know turned on and even if i go out of this focus mode you can see that nothing changes i tried rebooting my device i tried adding a new lock screen i tried multiple different things and for some reason my lock screen just goes dark right here and i cannot see the wallpaper if i haptic press you can see it will show me the wallpaper that's supposed to be there but then when i go there it's not and even if I change, like I said, it still does the same thing. So that's a weird bug that I've not had yet with iOS 18.1 or 18.2. So hopefully that also gets fixed in the next release. So we are going to run a Geekbench test to see how it compares to beta two, but I can just tell you from my first two hours of using the software, it is not as stable and as bug free as beta two was, which is a bit unfortunate. Okay. So we scored a 3470 on the single core and an 8401 on the multi-core. And you can see how that compares to the first run of the previous beta, beta two. So it was slightly higher on single core and slightly lower with multi-core. And of course, when it comes to the battery life, battery life actually seems a little bit better here than beta one or beta two. So I'm always able to judge this just based on the amount of battery I lose for the first couple of hours. And this does actually seem like a small improvement from beta two. So that's at least some good sign here with beta three. So I would expect battery life to improve again we'll confirm that on Saturday in the Apple weekly episode but so far it does seem like we might see a minor bump in battery life which is always good now as far as what to expect next from Apple I would expect to see iOS 18.2 beta 4 get released next week on the week of November 18th and this very well could be the final beta of 18.2 before the RC release so if we do get beta four next week, we should see that followed up by the RC release on the week of November 25th. And then we could get the final release of 18.2 as early as December 2nd on that Monday there. I'd say that the latest we'll get 18.2 is the week of December 9th. And the reason being is because Apple is in a hurry to get out these iOS 18.2 betas. It was the same with 18.1 as well. Apple's really trying to make up for lost time when it comes comes to getting these Apple intelligence features out there to the world. So Apple's moving quickly. And that's also why we saw a beta release today on a holiday, which is very rare for Apple. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But of course, if anything changes, I will keep you guys posted here on YouTube and also over on my X and threads accounts. So that is iOS 18.2 beta three. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and also be sure to subscribe if you want to continue seeing videos just like this one. And of course, when the final release comes out, I will have a big video covering every new feature and change here in 18.2. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.